Jesus, I'll never forget what you done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Simple Bible Study Podcast with your host, The Bible God, where we go through the Word of God one uh, book, one chapter, one verse at a time. But today as a uh, special session of the Simple Bible Study Podcast, we will be continuing our study in, in Genesis uh, very soon and picking up in this 21st chapter. But as I'm recording this, we here in America are celebrating uh, what we call Father's Day. And so I wish all of you fathers who listen in a very happy Father's Day. Uh, And so uh, since we'll be in the 21st chapter here, and I'm studying through it now, uh, in this 21st chapter, we meet Abraham receiving the son that was promised to him. And so I thought we'd stop here and take a quick look. Uh, I thought that'd be appropriate on a Father's Day. And so, you know, God has been promising this son to Abraham for quite a while now. It was back in chapter 15 that Abraham complained to the Lord about being childless, and the Lord then promised him a son. And so that's been around 15 years ago now at this 21st chapter. And finally, the day has come. Little Isaac is here, and it's a time of rejoicing and celebration and laughter. It's a joyous picture, you see. Uh, it, it's a it's it's a wonderful, uh, fun time. I'm sure Abraham is running around the tent, uh, <laughs> enjoying himself and 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 celebrating, and all the servants are happy. This is the time that he's been waiting for and wanting. And if that was all there was to the picture here, it would be quite wonderful. But you see, there's more to this picture because Isaac isn't the only child in this chapter. There's another child of Abraham here in this chapter, and that's this young man, Ishmael. You see, after um, after God didn't move quite fast enough for him, uh, Abraham decided to help God out. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, that never works out. God doesn't need your help. Uh, but he decided to help God out. So back in chapter 16, Abraham and his wife, Sarah, come up with a scheme to have uh, Abraham uh, have a child with their handmaid, Hagar. And uh, of course, uh, when you don't do things God's way, it'll always go wrong. And so it's been chaos ever since for everybody involved here. Uh, uh, And so here uh, we pick up the story at uh, Genesis 21. And and again, we're going to go through this whole chapter in, in a future study. But I just wanted to stop here. Genesis 21 and 9. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Uh, Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. Uh, and because of thy bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also, the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. So this child who didn't ask to be here, <laughs> uh, who, 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 who was a result of, of Abraham's scheming and didn't, doing things not God's way, uh, is, is, and is really only acting as a child would here in this scene, is to be put away. And I can understand that. I, I, I can get that. Abraham's uh, house needs to be in peace and kept together because the Messiah will come from this this very family. And so we've got to keep them together. We've got to keep a, a sense of, of holiness and harmony uh, in this family for as long as possible. I get that. Sometimes things don't work out, and there won't be the ideal family situation. 
In fact, there's not always that perfect situation with mom and dad and 2.5 kids and a picket fence and all that. I get that. You get that listening to me. Many listen to me right now. Uh, you, you didn't have that or you don't have that. Uh, and our children, uh, our children uh, maybe didn't uh, have that perfect situation either. I can understand that in our text. But here's what I don't get. Verse 14 says, Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. I don't get that. Yes, God said, listen to your wife. And yes, God said, send them away. But where did God said, give him no resources? <laughs> Abraham is a wealthy man. Where did God say, just give him a bottle of water and a piece of bread? Where does God say, abandon him? God never said that, but that's what Abraham does here. And so in this chapter, we have got Abraham, the father of Isaac, and Abraham, the father of Ishmael. <laughs> One is a wonderful, uh, attentive, uh, and caring father. And the other is, well, he's a deadbeat. <laughs> And on this Father's Day, I would like to talk to and about both the father of Isaac and the father of Ishmael. Uh, for you that grew up with someone like the father of Isaac, you know what, the, what, what value that has. Uh, my wife, for instance, grew up with a wonderful father, a funny and a caring man, whom I salute today on this Father's Day. And though he's no longer with us, my wife's love for him is a testament to his impact on this uh, on this world and on her life. Many of the, the, the TV shows uh, that uh, have come out over the years typically portray the father as like a bumbling idiot. <laughs> and, and, and I don't think that's an accident. The devil knows that a strong uh, uh, man, as an example, uh, uh, is necessary for a healthy society. Uh, and, and, and many of you have or had that. And I can tell you as a father myself that it, it's not an easy thing to be a father. Uh, how much is too much discipline? I wrestled with that for years. <laughs> What's not enough discipline? Where, where's the balance at? Uh, if, if you know, the, the, I, I, the, These are some of the challenges of, of being a father. Uh, if it doesn't work out with the mother, will the children still love you as the father? Everybody loves mama, it seems like, but 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 does that mean that if, if, if it doesn't work out with mom and dad, the dad gets rejected <laughs> if, they, if they can't work it out? And so, yes, it can be a challenge to be a father, but I salute those who stuck with it, who cared for your children. You listening that had a great father who maybe has gone on uh, from this life, I salute that man on this day. If yours was like the father of Isaac, and if yours is like the father of Isaac, or if you are like the father of Isaac, you deserve recognition. But that's not the experience of all of us. For many of us has known, have known not the father of Isaac, but the father of Ishmael. Many of us were left with a loaf of bread and a bottle of water. And some like me received even less. <laughs> and it's not just the physical resources. Because even if Abraham wasn't rich, uh, the shame in this is that he could have offered emotional support to the boy. Just show up and pat him on the shoulder or something. Do what you can, Abraham. <laughs> but his emotional support, uh, his care and love for this boy is as limited as the bread and water he left him with. My, my father, the Bible guy's father was the father of Ishmael. <laughs> and I say that not to bash the man or anything uh, like that. I recognize now today uh, that he was the vessel that God used to bring me here. So I have no, 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 no ill will. I'm not here to, uh, to bash him. Oh, I, I had a time <laughs> in my life where I hated the man, wished harm on the man. And how could I not? <laughs> my mama uh, had to struggle raising us. She had to sacrifice. We had some tough times. Uh, like here at verse uh, verse 15, it says, And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the scrubs. I, I recall when, when the food got low, Mama would uh, have to go and borrow money from the Korean swap meet owner across the street, <laughs> who wouldn't loan to most other people. 
but God made him give to her and loan her money so that we could eat. And you see, that's why I don't hate my father today. Because when the father of Ishmael wouldn't do his job, God stepped in. Verse 17 says, and God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. <laughs> It was David who said in Psalm 27 and 10, that if my mother and my father forsake me, then God will take me up. And so you listen to me who had the father of Ishmael and you, and you hold those feelings of anger or a grudge. Today is a good day to look not at him, but to look to the father who gave you more than a loaf of bread and a bottle of water <laughs> to the father who saw to the salvation of your soul. Verse 19, and God opened her eyes. She saw a well of water and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink and God was with the lad <laughs> and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. God provided the water that he needed and God provides the water for you, the water of joy the water of his Holy Spirit. For as Jesus said at John 7, 38, he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he spake that of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. You see, God picked up Ishmael and God picked up you and me. God gave Ishmael what he needed. It was usually the father in this culture who taught the boy a trade in these times. But it says, uh, it says here that God was with him and he learned to be an archer, <laughs> gave him something to do. God taught him, friends. It's the Lord who brought you this far. And so let that grudge go, man. <laughs> let that unforgiveness go. As I told you, I, I went through a period where I hated my own father. But a couple of years ago, the Holy Spirit asked me a question. What would your life be like if I left him in it? <laughs> the man who was in and out of jail had many issues. And worst of all, he was somebody capable of leaving and abandoning his own children. What would my life be like if he was still in it? And the answer was obvious. If he would have been in my life, I would have emulated and imitated him. His life, his issues would have become normal to me and I would have imitated those. You see, unless a person meets God and receives his Holy Spirit, they can't give you what they don't have. A few years ago, I went to visit my father. I'd only met him a few times in my whole life before that, but his sister had passed away and the Holy Spirit showed me a vision of me comforting him. Let me tell you, I resisted that vision, <laughs> but the spirit of God kept pushing me to go and pushing me. And finally, I just looked up at the heavens, at the sky, and I just said, God, why would you have me comfort a man that has done absolutely nothing for me? You know what I heard from the Holy Ghost? The Lord said, because I love him as much as I love you. <laughs> That's what the Spirit of God said to me. And that made me get up because God has shown me great love. I'm here today to witness to the fact that God has loved me. And if God has, has that same kind of love that I have seen uh, uh, to me for him, then that's somebody I need to go and encourage. <laughs> Not as a son necessarily, but as a minister of God, as somebody who has experienced and can testify to his love that God can help you, that God can raise you up. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I did it because God loved the man. Let me tell you that you that with that father of Ishmael, you may not care too much for him. You may not like him too much, but God loves him. And so today I have a, I have a wonderful, intelligent, and talented son. And I've tried to be to him the father of Isaac because he deserves it. But maybe you listening to me, you, you've been the father of Ishmael to your children. You, you haven't been there. You've, you, 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 you haven't provided as much as you, as you can. And you should admit it, brother. I'm telling you, if that's the case, go and find those children if you can. 
Go and apologize. Do what you can, even if it's just bread and water, but make it regular bread and water. <laughs> because even if they've they've grown up now, my friend, they can even even if they're adults, they can still use your help and your support. And even if they won't accept it, that's okay. Because at least you can say you try. And I'm asking God to help you to mend that relationship, brother, because he can do it. But it's up to you to initiate that process. Happy Father's Day to you all, but most of all, happy Father's Day to our Father in Heaven. I grew up at, without a father, as I said, but one day I read, it was a Father's Day in, in the, uh, a few years back, and I was in church. And I, I read that scripture uh, uh, where Jesus said, uh, when you pray, say uh, our Father. <laughs> and I thought, I didn't have my father, but Jesus gave me his, and that's good enough for me. God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.